It has been two months since the last video, so welcome to the new progress report for Sonocido the Mage. In the last two months quite a lot have happened. A playtester did uh, play Sonocido the Mage and the feedback was great, which is always great to hear. And the playtester also found a couple of bugs. And thankfully I could fix them all. So if you were in a dialogue and did go to the next one, it um, sometimes in dialogue it happened that you had answers that were cute. So if you, for example, wanted to take the first answer and typed one or uh, the controller button for selecting the first answer of the two, sometimes it was cute for the next dialogue. So when you did go to the next dialogue, this uh, cute command released and so it seemed like the dialogue was skipped. I fixed that, it was pretty easy. I still need to think about if there are certain edge cases where maybe uh, the dialogue still is cute, but it shouldn't be the case. And uh, if it is, uh, it is pretty easy to fix and uh, shouldn't be a problem, which is great. Next one was crash bug, uh, which was pretty easy to fix. Um, I changed the name of a file, but uh, didn't reapply the file or reload the file, so the engine searched for the old name, but couldn't find it because I renamed it, and uh, then the game crashed. This was very easy to fix, thankfully, and um, yeah. And now the third bug, which was also easy to fix, but took quite a lot of time, and um, that was if you go in a certain level, when you did go to the next level through the door, normally the game fades to black and then it fades back to normal. And in this case, the game faded to black but didn't fade black to, uh, back to normal, which was a problem and I thought the player was on the next level but it was still black. So I thought maybe the script uh, for some reason didn't load, that, that turns uh, the screen from black to normal again. But in the end, the new level wasn't even loaded, because um, there are two ways to enter a new level through the door. The first way is to press forward, and the next um, way is to press the interact button. And I always uh, use the interact button. I never use the forward button, uh, even if it is an option, uh, just because uh, that's the way I'm playing it, and uh, some other players. Thankfully, my playtester only play uh, with the forward button to go through doors, which makes sense. But uh, the problem was there were two different pieces of code for each uh, section and then one was a typo and so the next level couldn't load. And if the new level didn't load, there was no fading uh, back to normal. But I could fix it, it took a while. Uh, it was easy to fix when I knew what it was, and uh, yeah, now I'm now I'm really happy that the game uh, is fixed. I also did a little performance test um, if folder structure affects loading performance in Godot. It does a little bit, but you shouldn't change your uh, project because of it, um, unless you have a certain edge case where you need to load very, very uh, many things um, all the time then it might be something to look into it, but I always uh, try to make some of these performance experiments. I worked a little with Unity, uh, a little bit with GameMaker, but more with Unity, and in Unity you have lots of tutorials. If you want to make this, there is a tutorial. If you want to make that, there is a tutorial. If you want this performance tip, there is a tutorial. In Godot um, there aren't as many tutorials, there are a lot of great beginner tutorials uh, which uh, you can watch and uh, start uh, making your own games, but there isn't so much about uh, performance optimizations um, and so I do a lot of uh, little tests myself and uh, want to share it with the community, so the reddit post is linked down below, it's nothing special, but uh, maybe you are working with Godot and it's interesting to you. Next thing, which was really, really cool, I could play Sonsi of the Mage on an i7-920. And the i7-920 is a CPU which was released 2008 and it was paired with a Quattro 2000 GPU from Nvidia. 
And the game ran flawlessly. I uh, played it in 720p and it was uh, 60 FPS, solid. Uh, so that's great. I always had a little bit uh, of fear that uh, CPUs which were older than 2010 wouldn't have all the instructions which were needed for Godot to run. But uh, thankfully it does. It does seem to have it. Uh, so even if you have a 14-year-old CPU in your system, you still can play uh, Sun Seed of the Mage and have a lot of uh, fun with it, I think. So, wrote a lot of dialogue, fixed bugs and uh, ran it on very old hardware. I also played uh, three games. I replayed Age of Decadence, great game as always. I can really, really recommend. Uh, it's a very simple game, but uh, but it was great. Neon Struct Desperation Column. This was a game jam game, which is also uploaded on Steam. It's free and it's very minimal, but it was a lot of fun and I can wholeheartedly uh, recommend that game. I also played Fates of Art, which was interesting CRPG, isometric. Yeah, can I recommend these uh, three games. I link them down below. So, that's it for this video, until next time.